How could such a high-profile landmark in New York prove so vulnerable? Chris Wise is a structural engineer for Europe's tallest building, the Commerce Bank in Frankfurt. Um, is that right for us to say prove so vulnerable? I mean, two planes crashing into the building. That's, <laughs> you've got to have one heck of a building to withstand that, haven't you? I, I, think, I think it's pretty amazing that they stood up, actually. And, um, it, of course, it wasn't the plane impact itself which brought the buildings down. It was the fire that followed afterwards. And I think the great thing about the buildings is that uh, they didn't collapse for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half afterwards. And that meant that probably 10 or 20,000 people could get out and escape. Chris, I don't know if you can see the pictures. I think the one we're going to see now is the first explosion. Um, so just talk us through this and the sort of impact felt on this building. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the outside of that building is, a, is what's known as a tube. The whole of the outside skeleton is like a big uh, frame. You can punch a hole through the side of it. Which is what happened. Which is what happened when the aircraft hit it. And the, 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 the frame is able to bridge across that opening. So the building won't collapse at that point. So all the floors above that are still being held uh, in position. It's knocked out some of the columns. But gradually the fire is taking hold. And eventually what must have happened is that the, uh, the steel structure inside eventually effectively, effectively melted. Second one, Chris. Yeah, again, it's a similar, similar thing. The, the building is intact, and at that point, people down at the bottom would have just felt an incredible shock. Yeah, but our they would correspondent have been said it felt like a, a very heavy skip landing. Uh, that's and right. So the building shook. That's right. Well, almost like a, a small earthquake or something like that. You'd certainly know what was going on. And then this is about an hour after first impact? That's right. And if this is, yeah, as it, it's going down now, and I think what, what's happened there is that eventually some of the columns have been so weakened by the heat that they've buckled and uh, probably lots of them in fact but maybe all the way along one side of the building and then the floors have just collapsed onto the floor underneath the very top part of that building weighs between 80 and 100,000 tons and so as soon as the columns fail you, it's like having a pile driver weighing 100,000 tons crashing Say into the top again. of the building 80 to 80, 80 to 100,000 tons, tons is the weight of the building above where the planes impacted into the side so that's what landed on the ground around the Twin Towers? No. The, the or some of it went inside More and than down. that. Oh, the, that was the part that landed on, on the top of the towers. The, the total weight of those buildings hitting the ground is about 500,000 tons per tower. And that's what went into the streets all the way around. And that's probably, that probably explains why the Salomon Tower went down later on. Because Salomon Tower being? The 47-story tower just next door. And I think that was hit by the debris from, the, from one of the World Trade Center towers collapsing. Can you build an indestructible building? You can. I've been asking myself that question all night. <laughs> yeah, sure. um, you can. You can build a, a building that is pretty resilient, and these towers have shown themselves to be very resilient. Um, you could increase the the period that it would survive in a fire. Um, this one, they went. They collapsed after an hour, an hour and a half. If you encased everything in a foot of concrete, for example, and made everything bigger and stronger and heavier. Maybe you could make, extend that to two hours, but you, you have to remember that the scale of this impact and the amount of fuel on those planes is probably 50 or 60 tons of fuel burning. Right, right. Um, Which was shot into the center of the building. That's right. It's like having a bomb made of 50 tons of uh, fuel right in the center of the building. And there's very little that I think you could do to really to stop that building coming down eventually. All right, Chris, we're going to leave it there for the moment anyway. Thanks very much for joining us because I want to go to New York uh, and our correspondent there, uh, Jane Stanley.